It fits snugly in the hand due to the curvature. Your fingers would automatically reach the volume down button, which is also a shutter button. It is like the Motorola's iconic dimple back, but just more practical. Just draw a C when it is sleeping and it wakes up to the camera application. For lack of a better name, I present you the review of 1080p display, 4 gigs of RAM, 2.3 GHz processor, 32 GB storage variant of one of many Zenfone 2s. It has a 13 megapixel camera which is loaded with features and Asus named it like a ninja fighter, the Pixel Master. Dropping all the geeky specs for this one, I am happy with the camera. The phone produced detailed but not very vivid photographs outdoors. If I hadn't set the exposure point right, it gives blown out highlights or two contrasty shadows. But shadows however can be recovered with any editing software like Snapseed. Indoor lighting is not bad either as my only complaint was that the phone produced very grainy images. But the whiteness balance was mostly accurate though. The only downside to the camera is that the way it handles low light is particularly bad. The grains take such a toll on images that the details just wash out. Interestingly, I found that the super resolution mode gave me significantly less green images in low light. There is a dedicated low light mode, but it is very bad. Apparently, it gave me more greeny and a 3 megapixel super low resolution photo. I see no practical use of it. There are exactly 17 modes to choose from and they all do what they are advertised to do. One mode I found myself engrossed with was the manual mode which lets you control the shutter speed, ISO and the exposure value. The good thing is that the manual mode also worked with videos. You can control focus and ISO before shooting the video. The auto mode manages things very well. Here you can see droplets of water having sharp focus and a subtle bokeh in the background. Very pro-like. There is a dedicated depth of field mode that blurs the background even further to pop the subject. You can refocus the shots too. HDR works like a boss. Here you can see how perfectly it balanced the highlights of skies and the shadows during a sunrise. Don't try the HDR mode in dark as you might get unnecessarily blown out photos. Selfie obsessed people are in for a real treat as well as this phone has a beautification mode that reduces blemishes and smoothens out the images. The interesting pull up timers is also a great utility for selfies. Video performance was pretty decent. Shakes weren't an issue thanks to a stabilizer. Audio clarity in video recording is par good from what other mid-rangers offer. An addition of 4K recording would have been a better step up. If you are into any kind of photography or filmmaking, you will like the built-in time-lapse mode that records beautifully created time-lapses. It is probably the best camera phone in the mid-range price segment. Inexpensive for a big 1080p display and a decent camera to play with. Alternatively, if you want to have options, you can go for the Mi 4 or the OnePlus One.